So first of all, thanks to my friend, Dr. Julie Worley from Illinois for assistance in bringing you all this topic on self-care to prevent PTSD. So what is happening right now? You can see it coming, we all can. Who wouldn't have a knot in the pit of their stomach going to work in times like these? Even Iron Man gets a quality suit when he's off to face unknown dangers and to save the world. If you're a student, some of your rites and end of year rituals have been delayed or even taken away entirely. Things you've been looking forward to for years and worked hard for. Now you're working to finish your degree with a technology learning curve and the fun parts are all missing from the experience to boot. If you're a newly licensed nurse, you're walking into trial by fire because many places just don't have the bandwidth to give you a complete and proper orientation. If you've worked in the OR all of your career, suddenly you're working on a medical surgical unit for the first time ever. If you're at the bedside, you're working much longer shifts than the usual 12 to 13 hours because you can't leave your coworkers in the middle of a code or during a rush of admissions. We see you. Post-traumatic stress disorder can be caused by traumatic events at work, serious health problems, repeated stressful experiences, a shocking, scary, or dangerous exposure, single or continued exposure to a life-threatening event. Working with COVID-19 and often without the needed support qualifies. We still don't even know when normal will come back and what that might look like. Plenty of healthcare staff blaze this trail ahead of us though. The AIDS epidemic is not that far in our rear view mirror. And people in the community and in the hospitals were petrified. What the CDC knew changed seemingly every week or even every day. Suddenly, nurses of 25 years had to adjust to wearing gloves when there was any potential for touching body fluids. Seems like a no-brainer now, but at the time, that was a huge deal. And hospitals kind of scrambled for supplies to meet the need for what is now considered universal precautions. Some workers did become frightened enough to leave the medical field entirely, and that's a normal reaction. We're here to tell you to hang in there. What is known is that our healthcare workforce must remain strong and healthy. That's a tall order. How to stay well. The typical strategies like good nutrition, sleep, and self-care are all great and applicable. It's just that even if you try to go to the store in scrubs, someone may attack you. It has happened. So how do you stay well during this time? You're under a shelter in place order, which prevents hanging out at the bar with coworkers to vent, or going to relax while someone pretties up your sore feet. Even your favorite gym is closed down. You can't go to your trusted therapist or your primary practitioner sometimes because it's a routine visit. Extra stress and all the usual coping mechanisms are disappearing. Plenty of friends are joking, but not joking, about resorting to alcoholism. What can you really do? Well, recognize trauma when you feel that extra anger and irritability, feelings of hopelessness and helplessness when you have a sense of just being disconnected from everyone else. Common symptoms, physically, stomach upset, dizziness, racing thoughts, pounding heart, all totally normal. There is no wrong way to respond to this. Whatever you're feeling, just allow it. Establish a new routine to allow your brain a chance to operate in an automatic fashion and rest. Recognize when the trauma becomes PTSD. There are red flags that you're going to look for in yourself. Having trouble functioning, experiencing nightmares or insomnia, reduced ability to interact uh, or connect with people, having suicidal thoughts, and avoiding anything that reminds you of the trauma. Maybe you're trying to avoid going into work. These may indicate that you're not coping well and need help. Never hesitate to get help. So how do we cope? It is so tempting to immerse in the media and news exposure of what is happening. I'm guilty of that too. Avoid or limit this behavior. You're re-traumatizing yourself and keeping your stress response elevated. Continue to connect with others in new ways and with new rituals. Video chats are a thing. Use them. Have drinks online together or chat about the day. Watch a movie together virtually. A simple phone call. Write letters to people you haven't talked to in ages. Join some sort of health and wellness support group, giving you a reason to think about something besides the trauma that you're experiencing. Pick up a hobby, reusing egg cartons or a still packaged wood burning kit you bought and forgot about five years ago.
try guided enhanced mindfulness using guided meditation with Tara Brock. Um, she has titles like Love and Kindness and then Pandemic Care Resources, including a meditation named Sheltering in Love. Lots of web and mobile exercise apps are providing free services during this time as well. Pop Sugar Fitness has a 30 minute low impact grooves workout on YouTube. This is a good time to reintroduce the basics into your life. A hot bath, a cup of tea while watching the sunset. Find other ways to get sunshine and exercise. Weed the long overdue flower bed, bike up and down the driveway, order a tiny trampoline for your front yard or your living room. Use virtual counselors and mobile apps that send push notifications to your watch reminding you to breathe or to take a minute to think about you. There are many companies offering free services during this time and many more offering free services for meditation, exercise, and health, specifically to healthcare workers. You are a hero, but you're not a superhero. Do not light yourself on fire to keep someone else warm.